This is Twit. Amazon's going to start having union issues. In fact, there was an article in the New York Times Magazine this, today. Amazon's great labor awakening. Uh, COVID-19 has cemented the e-commerce giant's hold on the economy, but it has also spurred employees all around the country to organize. Amazon, yeah, sure like Google, has been fighting union unionization. Uh, they don't, on February they don't 8th, uh, mail-in ballots went out to all the employees of Amazon's warehouse in Bessemer, Alabama, um, so that they can send in their votes as to whether or not they want to participate in a union. Amazon had been very vehemently opposed to this and tried to make it so that uh, the employees couldn't vote from home and instead would have to come into the warehouse in mass to cast their votes, despite all of the COVID concerns, but they were overruled. The, you know, there's, the article talks about uh, Amazon in what's called the Inland Empire in Southern California, San Bernardino and Riverside counties. Amazon is the largest employer in the region, 14 facilities, 14 two logistics air hubs, 40,000 people work for Amazon in this area of Southern California. And so, you know, one of the things people say is, well, if you don't like working at Amazon, at least they're hiring, at least people are getting jobs. It, nobody's making you work there. But if you live in this area, it may be that's the job. That's the one job you can get. And the thing that I think people are uh, overlooking is more and more that is going to be the case across the U.S. Specifically, over the last year during COVID, Amazon had this unprecedented physical expansion in the U.S. Um, it now, I mean, it more than doubled the number of delivery stations that it has in the U.S., which are these kind of warehouse facilities that, unlike the fulfillment centers we think of, they operate kind of like Amazon post offices where uh, packages from Amazon warehouses will go and then be organized so that they can be delivered. But Amazon has been, like, I believe that they grew their physical presence in the U.S. over 2020 by more than 50 percent. Um, Between and January and October of 2020, they added 427,300 employees worldwide, almost half a million yeah. new workers. A thousand new facilities in suburbs across the United States, a thousand and those facilities are specifically about localizing delivery and allowing, I mean, those facilities may not have that many direct jobs working in the facility, but they operate as hubs for Amazon Flex, which is their kind of a contract-based, almost Uber-ass delivery program where people can agree to sign up for blocks to go pick up packages and then drop them off at people's homes in the 40-minute radius around the facility, which means there are less of those packages uh, being delivered by postal workers or UPS and more kind of going to this weird, haphazard Amazon ecosystem. It doesn't surprise me that, that California is seeing such growth because we passed Prop 22 in June which was the proposition floated by Uber and Lyft to allow them to continue to hire, not to hire workers, to make them contractors. Um, and uh, it feels like it's, it, 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 the, the, in California, you've got an opportunity to do more, more of this gig working stuff, this flex style stuff, uh, because it's now protected. And you don't have to pay people for health insurance. You don't have to pay people a decent living wage. Is I just think about the I think about the people I met running for office here in Massachusetts that worked at Amazon and them telling me about the working conditions where they felt tremendous pressure to come in at you know, 10 and then work until, you know, the early hours of the morning. Um, I, I remember hearing about older people talking to me about how they lost their job and they're trying physically to push through, you know, walking around a warehouse all day, putting things in boxes and how it takes a brutal toll on their body. And you, know, you read in this New York Times story about how this lawsuit being brought forward is because they wouldn't keep people safe from COVID-19 and, and kind of pushed past the kind of protections that they needed to take allegedly. So um, I, I just think Amazon can put out all the slickest videos in the world there, but I think ultimately they've got to be answerable to regulators in providing a safe workplace. That that just seems like the the bare minimum there. Is unionization and this week a solution? In particular, go ahead, uh, Paris. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, and this week in particular, I think shows kind of the. 
uh, complexity of that uh, push and pull between Amazon and regulators as um, the New York State Attorney General just sued Amazon for what they allege as uh, not pr pro properly protecting their employees from COVID-19. And that only came after Amazon a couple of days earlier preemptively sued the New York State Attorney General saying the New York State Attorney General shouldn't have uh, the authority to try and regulate our uh, protection of workers in New York facilities. That should only be the job of the federal government. You should keep our, your hands off of us. Wow. Um, so it's, I mean, growing and growing. And this is far from the only case that Amazon is currently involved at a state attorney general level right now. Yeah. Yeah, and Leah, to answer your question about unionization, I am I am clear-eyed and realistic. I think sometimes people talk about unions like they're a, they're a panacea, and here in Boston, we are a union town. Like everything in Boston is based around the power of of unions. Look at Marty Walsh; that was just uh, brought into the Biden administration. He's a union guy, and the reason he's mayor of Boston is because of those ties. Um, I. I you know, some of the most sexist experiences I had running for office were dealing with unions here in Boston. Like it was just the most condescending, like old boys club stuff you could possibly imagine. And I'm, I'm realistic that that is something that happens with this. But I feel like overall, you know, workers are not going to like Amazon is a corporation. They're going to do what is in their best interest, which is pay their workers the least. And I just think overall moving in that direction, is it going to solve every single problem? Of course not. Are there going to be unintended consequences? Of course not. Am I going to pay a little bit more in Amazon Prime every year? Of course not. But will it give workers the bargaining power that they need to make these workplaces more safe? I think that answer is probably yes. So I'm personally very much for that. It's a challenge. I mean, I, especially during a quarantine, I shop at Amazon more. That's why they made more money. I'm not alone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a great convenience, um, but you you really have to be aware of the toll uh, that it's taking on its workers. Um, I think if we've learned anything over the last decade, it's that people will trade almost anything for convenience. Yep. And yeah. I actually think that I mean, very, very, very big picture. That speaks to the absolute premium our time is at as a culture yeah a country and like in the, in the world overall like we all are just sort of taxed down to the very very minute of every day and so we're willing to pay to get some of that time back and i it's it's a tough that's my excuse and i'm sticking with it it's tough <laughs> i'm busy i don't have time i'm sorry amazon workers and i think you know a lot of us say well if they didn't like it they could quit here's a quote from the uh the new york times story there, you know, we workers get fired very easily over small things or not making rates or taking too much time off task. There's always this pool of people who are one step behind you. So if you speak up or if you organize, in other words, attempt to unionize, there's a hundred temp workers right outside the door who would be able to take your job. And I get, I gather, they're not just, they're not that many other jobs. Yeah. Especially not that many other jobs that pay at the rate of Amazon. Which it's more than is, minimum um, wage, right? It's, 50, you know, $15 an hour in a lot of warehouses, yeah. um, which is a good rate in comparison to the minimum wage and uh, pay for other um, work and labor. But I don't think that minimizes in any way the complaints and toll that these sort of jobs are taking on these people's bodies and their lives. And by the way, I could go shop at Walmart, but I don't know if that's going to make it be any better. I, you know, mm -hmm. I think this is maybe a systemic problem. And, and, and as a consumer, I don't know if there's a, a remedy. I can, I guess, go down to my local stores. I probably should buy books. There are bookstore. some, um, I mean, there are some, I guess, remedies or alternatives being proposed. Bookshop uh, is a... Uh, a local, I guess, alternative for right. Amazon, just in the sense that it connects a lot of local booksellers. They specifically are getting the um, payment when you buy a book from them and it's shipped to you. 
Similarly, in New York, um, there is a new kind of initiative called it's shop in dot NYC. Um, and it is a collection of retailers here in Brooklyn and Manhattan that are just, you know, storefronts, small shops, but they all of their products have been integrated under this online platform. And you can go and buy, you know, chocolates, uh pants, random house goods, things like that. <laughs> They're all from different stores, but then the stores will put them in a little box, put it outside, a courier will come and pick it up. It'll all be put in one box for you oh, and delivered to your door. I'll and those do stores that. Get the money. That sounds good. Yeah. I've been buying audiobooks because Audible, uh, I've been an Audible customer for, since for 20 years now. Um, that's owned by Amazon. So I've been looking at Libro.fm. Corey Doctorow told me about this, which is the same audiobooks, but they share some of the money with your local bookstore. And you can see my local Copperfields books uh, get some of the money. So I think that's a nice way to do it. Maybe we should start looking for those kinds of alternatives. Uh, I I don't know. I always I feel like I've, I've sat in so many meetings where people talk about some future they want to get to where the everyone on the planet is going to make this different choice and it's all going to get better. Everyone just sign off of Facebook. It'll solve everything. And I, I really feel strongly that, you know, the answer is regulation. Yeah. I, 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 I just, I feel like anything more than that is just wishing it's almost. Yeah. The it, onus shouldn't be on the consumer. Right. right exactly. Okay. And it shouldn't, and, we're, and humans are not famous for making the right decisions no. just because we think they're the right decisions. Right. 